Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron. This is Scott. This is Tucker. And today we're talking about the Devil's Playbook. All right, so we're back. It's episode five of season two, and um, we're talking about the Devil's Playbook. So really what we mean by this is we want to look throughout the pages of Scripture throughout human history and look at how the devil um, has worked. Um, you know, we look through the Bible and we see lots of different terms that are attributed to him. What are some of those terms? Um, they're more descriptors, really, I guess. What are some of the descriptors that the the, the Bible uses to describe um, the Bible, uh, the devil, Satan? Satan. Okay, that's one. Satan, that's one, right? Um, <laughs> the adversary, yeah. uh, roaring lion. Fallen angel. Yeah. Um yeah, you mentioned like several. I mean, I, I, mean, I know that that Revelation calls him the the um, accuser of the brethren, yeah, the prince and, of this world, something like that. Yeah, the prince, the prince of this world, the evil one, Beelzebul. But one that I think is interesting, like when I talk about it being a descriptor, as I was mentioning it to you earlier, Tucker, is in Zechariah. It's a minor oh, yeah. prophet, and it's Zechariah, I think three one. Um, let me flip over there, and make sure. But in Zechariah three one, it's talking about sort of like the accuser. And it actually, in Hebrew, you can look this up with like an interlinear. So Zechariah 3, 1, yeah. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. So Satan is a noun. So Satan is standing at his right hand to oppose him. That's actually a verb in Hebrew, but it's Satan. So Satan is standing, waiting to Satan him. So like the accuser is waiting to accuse him. So it's like... That's kind of like an identifier of like what he actually does. Is he somebody that yeah. is always accusing and deceiving? Yeah, the ASV says adversary. Adversary. To be his adversary. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah. that's what Satan is, is your adversary. And so in this episode, we want to take a look at if he is our adversary, our accuser, he's always trying to basically, the father of lies, he's trying to tempt us and get us to commit sin. Um, he's been doing it for 6,000 years, right? Mm-hmm. So six, 7,000 years, the age of the earth according to scripture, the the human history sort of timeline. And he's been really doing that sort of stuff since the garden. Um, but we also recognize he's not, he's not God. He's not mm-hmm. deity. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He's not all powerful. Um, so he's got to get permission to do different things like that he wants to do. It's kind of like in the book of Job, he had to ask God's permission to do things to Job. And so what we want to do today is try to look at his methods, mm-hmm. his tactics and see, you know, what he's, you know, what he's um, done before so we can see what he's done again. I think that is one of the misconceptions, at least for me growing up, was that, you know, maybe he could read my mind or have these special powers and he was kind of like God. But um, when we were studying it and kind of the last several years as well, just it's a lot more freeing to know that he isn't God and he can't do the things that maybe people always say he has. Yeah, the idea of like the devil made me do it. We know he didn't make you do it, but he'll he'll definitely put temptation in front of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, he put temptation in front of Jesus. And Hebrews 4.15 says Jesus was tempted in all points like we are, yet never sinned. Right. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like he's not deity, but, I mean, 1 Peter 5.8 says he's like a roaring lion looking at whom he can devour. I mean, he's after us. And so hopefully an episode like this will help us to say, okay, this is what he's done in the past. And then maybe you'll be in a situation in your life where, you're like, oh, wow, this is just like what happened. You know, if you're a young guy, right? And let's say you have this opportunity to basically do something you shouldn't do with a woman. And you're like, wow, this is just like Joseph in Egypt. Like, and look how yeah. he responded. Right. As opposed to, well, you know, this is like David and look how it, what David gave into here. You know, I think we're hard on David sometimes. They always talk about Bathsheba, but, you know, David did a lot of really good things. He's a really good, good leader for Israel. So, but yeah. we can look at those ways that the devil tempted people. And recognize that, hey, if we're in a situation like that, here's the way to respond and the way not to respond. You know, so absolutely. Um, what do what do what do uh, athletes do before they go up against opponents? Well, I remember back in seventh grade, you go watch the film and yeah. kind of see you would study their moves and their plays. And I can't say I'm a sports person, so the terms I'm probably going to use are wrong. But just be able to watch the things that they do, so you'll be able to prepare yourself to face them on the court or on the field and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's right. That's what. Yeah. I, in college, I had a buddy that played football and I played baseball and we really like we didn't watch that much film. But I remember the football team man. like I'd get out of practice and I'd go walking by like the above the gym. And there was this one film room. And man, it's like every time I walk by there, the whole football teams and they're watching film like 
<laughs> we spent a lot of time training in baseball, but football players, man, they spent so much time and they were watching film for what purpose? What were they trying to prepare do? Prepare themselves for the, for the adversary. Yeah. Right? They were trying adversary. to prepare themselves. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about, um, the, let's talk about hell, right? So just, I mean, very briefly, we don't have to get into this because we're talking about the devil, but the reason is, 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 um, is the devil going to rule hell? Uh, no, no. Hell was created as a punishment for him. Yeah. It, it wasn't, God didn't make him a kingdom, you know, he yeah. didn't say, Oh, let me go ahead and set you up a place that'll fit your personality and uh, I'll let you rule there. Yeah. Hey, that'd be a reward, not a punishment. Yeah. So, I mean, we see that, like, I know I've watched movies over the years that show like this idea of hell and they show like the devil ruling it. And it's almost like this, like I've said this before, it's like Satan is not going to be the manager <laughs> at hotel hell or whatever. San Satan's not running it, right? It's not his job to no. ensure that you receive the appropriate amount of torture. For no. Your sins. And that's actually, and when I'm thinking of it, there was a movie that showed like it depicted hell and it depicted the devil as like ruling it and being like, people were brought to him for punishment. And he was like, it was almost like this sort of mischievous idea that like, if you're really an evil person and you go to hell, as long as you and the devil are like cool with each other, you won't get punished. Yeah. It's like, it'll be a good place. And that's where people have that expression. It's so foolish. They just say, uh, what does it go like? Better to rule in hell than serve in heaven. Something, Something like yeah. yeah. Reign in hell than serve in heaven. I've heard that before. And the, it's it's so, totally a misunderstanding. Matthew 25 talks about how the that hell was created for the devil and his angels, not for them to rule it, but for them to be punished there. Yep. And so like, since the devil is going to be punished eternally, he basically wants to take everybody with him, right? It's like, a kid that gets mad and takes his ball and goes home, but wants to inflict as much punishment as he can. That's what the devil is trying to do. And so, yeah. you know, first Peter five, eight says, be sober, be vigilant, right? Because what your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion. So let's look at some examples, um, in the Bible. We're going to look back at some old texts. Romans 15, four says a thing written before time or a four time were written for our learning. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. What, what are some old Testament examples you guys can think of where, um, the devil has tempted people. I mean, from the beginning. I mean, there's pretty. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Yeah. Right. Adam yeah. and Eve, the first time that you read about it. Yeah. Uh, tempting them, convincing them that uh, God didn't really mean exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. What's another? I mean, um, I, think, I suppose. Well, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think Genesis is a good one. Let's, let's go there. We, mm -hmm. you know, I, we could think of lots of them. We obviously, for time's sake, won't have time to go through all the ones that we'd like, but. You know, like we said, we're going to have the podcast resource page, which will have sermons, stuff like that. And I can think of a couple sermons that will actually fit this one pretty well. But if you go to Genesis, go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, God has created, you know, in Genesis 1, day 6, about verse 26, he created man and woman in their in, in our God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, um, the, the Godhead's image, which means an eternal soul. And so then in chapter two, he's given more of a description about creation and like the garden. And then in chapter three, basically the devil comes to him and uh, Tucker read Genesis three um, verses two and three. All right. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. So the serpent, uh, he comes and asks Eve like, Hey, did God say, that you shouldn't eat of every tree. And what you just read is basically Eve says, yeah, we can eat of all the trees, but we can't eat of the one in the midst, which is referencing the tree of good and evil. Right. Mm -hmm. So like the devil asks her and she answers right or wrong. Yeah. She answers right. Yeah. Yeah. She answers That's right. To him. Yeah. Like she knows what God said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, look at the next verse then look at verse four and five. Look at what, look at what the devil basically his response is. He just says, you won't die. You won't die. You shall yeah. not surely die. Yeah, I mean, God says if you do it, you'll die. Eve says God said that, and devil, the devil's like, no, nah, that's not what God meant. Because I mean, you you can look at that like you said, God means what He says. That's one of the tactics the devil's been using from the beginning. Is well, that's not what God means, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because she knew exactly what God said, and the devil got her to think, well, yeah, I know God said that, but that's not really what He meant. And it's yeah. like, did is that what God meant? Yeah, I mean, what do you look down? Look at verse six. When the woman saw the tree was good for food pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. 
Then the eyes of both of them were opened. They knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering coverings, right? Their coverings weren't sufficient. God made them additional ones. But what you learn there is, I mean, let's talk about not going too much into what we discussed earlier about like Mm -hmm. creation. We talked for like 40 minutes about these different like obscure questions. But when we look at Romans 5, it says that death entered, um, sin, spiritual death entered whenever uh, Adam and Eve sinned, right? In the garden, right? Mm -hmm. From that point, did they die? Well, they died spiritually, right? Now, from that point on, people had to atone for their sins through animal sacrifice until ultimately Christ came and basically was the just and justifier of all people. His blood went backwards and forwards, right? Yeah. But physically, like whatever their state was before, they're now cut off from the tree of life. God yeah. sets cherubim with a flaming sword, in, I think east of Eden, and they're not allowed to go back into the garden. So they're cut off from the tree of life. So in a sense, did God know exactly what he was talking about? Yeah, yeah. of course he did. He knew they were going to die. And when they gave into that, they died. They were now going to die physically, and they also were going to die spiritually, unless there was an atonement made for their sins. Yeah, they lost their their fellowship the way that they had it with God yeah. because previously He had walked with them in the garden. Mm-hmm. They had that close relationship in the presence of God. Yeah, and and that is very different after that. Mm-hmm. I mean, He makes the people say the first sacrifice for them, mm-hmm. uh, and He's no longer walking with them that yeah. way. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's interesting later, and we can get into this another day, but, you know, you see others who, who are said to walk with God, right? And what happened to him? Yeah, Enoch? Yeah. He was not. Yeah. He was taken. So, you know, they lost that spiritual mm-hmm. life that comes from that close relationship with God yeah. immediately. And then, of course, they also died physically as well. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the, like, in this episode, just for time's sake, we're going to end up talking about two different tactics. One is getting people to believe that God didn't mean what he said. Mm -hmm. And the second one is using a lie from a religious person, which we'll get to later. But as far as like God not meaning what he said, one of the things that immediately comes, because sometimes we think of things in human, like human perspective. Like Mm -hmm. we think of things like, man, that's harsh. Like I I wouldn't do that. It's like, well, you probably wouldn't because you're not God. You don't see the full picture. But like when I look in the Old Testament, one of the ones that kind of blows my mind um, and is really, it's good for me because it helps me. When you look at scripture, it helps you to think more like the mind of God, right? Because that's what it is. Scripture is the mind of God. Um, I think about the guy that picked up sticks on the Sabbath. Um, if you go to, uh, to Numbers 15, flip to Numbers chapter 15. Um, I'm going to give some other passages that you can always like pause the video and look up. But um, Exodus 20 talks about remember the sabbath day and keep it holy that's one of the 10 commandments um now exodus 35 talked about on the sabbath things you're not supposed to do in exodus 35 1 through 3 it said don't do any work don't even kindle a fire in your house on the sabbath Mm -hmm. so don't do work and don't kindle a fire now just in case anybody's watching and you're new to this deuteronomy 5 1 through 5 says that the law of moses was not given to their fathers but to the people that came out of egypt so the law of moses was given only to physical israel A lot of people aren't taught this. A lot of people think the Ten Commandments are for today. You should be glad you're not under the Ten Commandments because if you were, the punishment would also be for breaking the Sabbath was what? It's getting stoned to death. Yep, getting stoned to death. If you broke the Sabbath, like if you've done, if you mow your grass on Saturday, then what should happen to you if you're under the law of Moses? You need to die. You get stoned. I mean, a lot of people love, love, love that uh, the the Ten Commandments, they get down to the Sabbath. I keep the Sabbath. I can't do anything. That's right. Um, You know, it's a convenient excuse sometimes Mm -hmm. for some people, Mm -hmm. um, but they leave out the other part. And the thing about it is someone's like, I've had people so many times say, we're not under the Ten Commandments, so I can murder somebody? I'm like, man, man, of all the Ten Commandments, nine of them are restated in the New Testament, except for keep the Sabbath. And Colossians 2 says it was nailed to the cross, right? The law of Moses nailed to the cross, which included the Sabbath. So I guess I'm saying Deuteronomy 5, 1 through 5, says this covenant was made with Israel, not the people before them, and none after. And Deuteronomy 4.13 says that covenant was the Ten Commandments. Right. So anyway, Sabbath was supposed something the law of Moses required them to keep. Exodus 35, 1 through 3 or 4 says, don't kindle a, a fire, don't do work if you do, you're stoned. Right. So let's go and look at Numbers chapter 15, because you have an example of a guy, it didn't take long, before somebody breaks this law. And when you read this story, like, this is what God said needed to be done. So you want to read it, Tucker? Read yeah. um, 
Read 32 through 36, and I'll interrupt accordingly. All right. (laughs) Sounds good. Uh, Now, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. Oh, man. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him under guard because it had not been explained what should be done to him. Okay, so they arrest him. That's what put him under guard. And they say it hadn't been explained. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they're thinking, well, look, God did say don't. Uh, don't kindle a fire and don't do work. But he didn't say don't pick up sticks. Like, I don't know what to do about this, right? Yeah, does that yeah. count or not? Does give it the, count Give the benefit of the give doubt. Give the benefit of the They're doubt. They're new. It's early. That's Maybe right. they just didn't understand if this counted the same way. That's right. And that's probably, I mean, what would you do if, if God said, don't pick, don't kindle any fire, don't do any work, and you see this guy picking up sticks. Now, some translations say wood. And that, that word there, Hebrew, if you want to look it up on Google, you can do that now. Um, it's translated like trees in some places, right? So he obviously this dude's not jacked. He's not carrying trees, but he's likely carrying lumber, right? Probably not little tiny sticks like we think of twigs, but he's carrying firewood and they mm-hmm. see it and they're like, are you allowed to do that or not? Yeah. And so look at verse 35 and 36. Listen to God's response. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones and he died. God cleared it up. Now, if you're watching, you may think, because the first time I saw that story, I thought like, wow. Like, he killed that guy for picking up for sticks. picking up sticks. But what was the, it wasn't that he was picking up sticks necessarily. It was that he did what? It was that he uh, profaned the Sabbath. Like yeah. He, he, he broke God's law. That's right. God said, don't do this. It, he could have picked up sticks the day before and been fine. Nobody would have cared. It wasn't yep. about picking up the sticks. No. It was about breaking the Sabbath. It was about breaking one of those one of those Ten Commandments. Yeah. And it was supposed um, to, the Sabbath was supposed to be holy to the Lord. Right. So it's like, in a sense, it's you like. You violated God's holiness. You're like disrespecting his holiness. And God could have, well, okay, I take that back. Let me figure out the way I want to frame this. Humans would think that God would say, ah, look, man, I told you not to do that. I'm going to let it pass this one time. Yeah. But God's not like us. Like, God can't lie. So when God says he's going to do something, like, and then you do what he says not to do. He's he's like he's he's, like, he's I, bound I, to it. He's bound he's to his word. Do it. He said he's going to do this, right? And I think that's important for us to remember when we look at any part of the Bible. Is like we have to think of God the way God tells us to think about Him, not the way we want to think about Him, right? I mean, right. Throughout the Old Testament, like you think most people would look at that, and the devil would say, like, "Look, man, God said don't kindle a fire and don't do work, but He didn't say you couldn't pick up sticks. Like, if God didn't want you to, uh, and maybe the guy even thought, like, hey, I'm not going to start a fire. I'm just going to prep it." And then first thing tomorrow yeah. morning, I'm going to light it. Yeah, it's like Nadab and Abihu, right? Yeah, yeah. Same kind of deal. Yeah. Very similar. He said, offer this thing. Well, he didn't say I couldn't do this. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of in that vein of thinking. Yeah. It makes me think just of an application from Eve, because I think so many of us can be like Eve. Just when, when she was, um, you know, the devil's like, you know, you won't surely die. Yeah. And so she sees the tree. It's just like, it's pleasant to the eyes. This tree is desirable to make me wise. Um the tree was good for food. Like you start kind of reasoning in your mind, like this mm-hmm. maybe it won't really be as bad as I think if I make this decision. Like mm-hmm. I feel like we've all been there when we yeah. go to make a bad decision or get tempted. Like, I don't know. I'll reason it to where it's okay in my mind and then I'll do it. And then you're yeah. like, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Humans are, we are experts at convincing ourselves something's okay. Are yeah. we not? Yeah. Like you take something, you know, is wrong and you start thinking about it and you're like, well, like I know God said I shouldn't do that, but I mean, it would probably help this or it, yeah. it make me feel good. Or I'll just say sorry after, you know, like, we do convince ourselves of a lot of things like that. Um, nine minutes. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Um, all right. So we've got lots of examples that come to mind that we've even discussed. Like, you know, the Ark of the Covenant. They weren't supposed to touch it. They weren't supposed to look at it. And yet, if you go and look in the Old Testament, like with the story of Uzzah, which is in 1 Samuel 6. No, 2 Samuel 6. <laughs> 1 Samuel 6 is where in Beth Shemesh, the ark comes back and the people are sacrificing. Everything's going good mm-hmm. until they decide, you know what? I really like to see what's in that ark. Like, And they look inside the ark and God strikes a bunch of people dead. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he said, and you'd say, well, he, they just looked in there. And God's like, yep. I told them not to look in it in Numbers 4. They looked in it. God was bound by his word. And the crazy thing about that is if you look in 1 Samuel 6, you have to go read it for yourself. The people didn't respond with like, how dare God? They responded yeah. with said, wow, God is holy. Yep. Like said, so, well, he's a holy God. He's a holy God. And they're like, wow, we deserved it kind of because so, God's so holy. Some of this yeah, is like, no surprise surprising, there. but it's just to show the holiness of him and yeah. reverence and stuff. To yeah. Know. I mean, he, like you said, if, he, if you can build a universe, you can make the rules and you can. Yeah, that's right. So 
Yeah, when you create, when you speak your own universe in existence, you can make the rules, yeah. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the show today. We'd like to mention you can download these episodes. They are sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network. We have an app available. You can check that out and get the answers to life's biggest questions. What's another um, what's another tactic the devil might use? I mean, I'd say the uh, another one that that we mentioned earlier is using a lie from a religious person. Yeah. Man, this one's so prevalent today. Yeah, there's a good example of that. Somewhere, yeah, right? yeah. We're, in the Old Testament? Yeah. What do you think? Which one? <laughs> I'm thinking I about the uh, the old prophet. Yeah, yeah. Young prophet, okay. Right. First Kings yeah. 13. You want to tell the backstory? Um, yeah, I can summarize it yeah. real quickly. Um, so there are two prophets. There's there's the young prophet who's been told to go up and deliver a message. Mm-hmm. And then there's an older one. So the, the, old, the young prophet is told, go up and del- deliver this message. When you return, don't come back the same way. Mm-hmm. Don't stop in anyone's house. Don't eat. Don't drink the, even the water there. Mm-hmm. Go there, do this, and come back a different way. Mm-hmm. He says, all right, I'll go. He goes. He delivers the message. He starts back on his way. Uh, he's invited to say, he says, no, I can't. This is what God told me to do. He says, no, and he leaves. Yeah, even the well, king. The, right, king, the king. The king says, hey, stay and eat with us. And he said, nope, God nope. told me what to do. I'm out of here. Right. Yep. Old prophet hears of it. He says, let me go hunt him down. Let me go find him. He catches up and he says, come back to my house and eat with me. I'm mm-hmm. a prophet. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if he started out that way. You have to go and read it. No, he check. did. Yeah. He said, but, uh, but, but the point is, he says, come back with me. Yep. He says, I can't do that. I've been told not to do that. Yep. And he says, no, no, listen, it's okay. It's okay. I'm also a prophet. Mm-hmm. And an angel of the Lord came to me and told me to come and get you and that yeah. it would be okay for you to come back and eat bread and drink water with me. But the Bible says, but he lied. He was lying to him. So the young prophet goes back with him and he sits down and he eats and he drinks water. And then God uses the old prophet mm-hmm. who lied to him to, to communicate to the young prophet who's now just disobeyed him. And he says... Mm-hmm. Because you didn't do what I told you, you're gonna die. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna go back uh, uh, to where your fathers are buried. Yeah, you, you you won't even make it there. Not not even not only will you not make it there, his corpse is not gonna make it there. Yeah. So he sets out. The old prophet lets him go. They finish, and then a lion kills him and stands beside his donkey, and he's dead. And the old prophet finds him. I guess he felt some remorse. Because he took him back and he had it arranged so that the man's bones would be laid next to his. Yeah. Um, yeah, but when that's a great explanation. I was really quick. It would have taken me like another four minutes to explain it. But basically what he's is, he's told by God, do this. And then some other person comes. And this guy, it even says he's a prophet. He is a prophet. Yeah, he is a prophet. And he says an older man, like young people normally respect their elders. They ought to. An older man of God who was a yeah, prophet. Tells him, hey, no, no. Look, I know you heard this from God, but God spoke to me. So the young prophet's like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to disregard what God told me directly. But this guy was lying. And that's so important because there are a lot of people today who are, they claim to be men of God. I'm not even going to say they're true prophets like this guy was. But this shows you even when a true prophet lied, God expected him to trust the word he got directly from God. Yep. And so today, what happens? You have the direct word of God to you and you read mm-hmm. something in it. And what are all kinds of guys who claim to be religious people, what do they tell you? They lie to you. Yeah, I'm telling you, like they, they kind of say the same thing. Yeah. Maybe the devil says, "Well, God didn't really mean it that way," or yeah. whatever. Like, like I'll just be straight up. The sinner's prayer is a lie. Mm-hmm. Like, if someone tells you who claims to be a religious person that you need to pray a sinner's prayer, is a liar. They may not realize they are, and yeah. I'm not trying to be mean. You can go to God's word. And that's read right. That for yourself, and you'll never read a sinner's prayer. That's right. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. You can you can read God's word for yourself and see what's actually in it. Yep. Or you can listen to this man who's an older man. Yep. Claims to be a man of God. And he's going to tell you. And that's exactly the application for yep. us today. Yes, it is. Um, uh, you know what God has said to do. Yep. Is it wise to take counsel from older men? Yes. Yeah. But not not to the point that you fail to check what God has said about it in the first place. Yeah. If you know God has said already, do it this way, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. It can be your father, your grandfather, an elder in the Lord's church, whatever. Mm-hmm. If they're wrong, if they're contradicting what God has said, and they're like, no, 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 listen, you just don't it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And they could be they could be an actual man of God who's making an error in judgment or who is sinning. Mm-hmm. It's your responsibility. And that's what this shows. Yeah. In the young prophet's case, it was his responsibility. He had been given instructions from God mm-hmm. on what he was supposed to do 
and how he was supposed to do it. And it didn't matter that an older man who, who by all rights he should respect, mm -hmm. who actually was a man of God, came along and said, no, do it this way. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He still died because he didn't do what God told him to do. Yeah. God wasn't like, well, I mean, he was an older man. Uh, you know, he, he was one of my prophets. So I can understand why you would, I'll give you a pass. No, it doesn't yeah. matter. It didn't absolve him from his sin. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, I just, it's, it's, it really frustrates me because I like, there's a lot of people that have contacted us that are watching the podcast that are like, I've been taught something that's different than what scripture says. And they're realizing it. And like, that's, they're honest and I love it, but it really irritates me. I'm just being honest that there are so many people out there that claim to be men of God that just don't care one whit for this Bible, man. Like they'll find a verse. They'll say like, oh, we're a, every church I've ever heard of is a Bible believing church. They say they are. They're, you know, Bible everything. But then like, I'll look on their website. I, I tell people all the time, if you want to find a church, send us a message and people will say, what do you think about my church? And I'll say, look, I'm going to get on your website and I'll look through your what we believe statement. And I'll say, your church says this, this, this verse says this. And a lot of times they just pull one passage out of context and they like make a whole doctrine out of it. And it's so frustrating because there's so many people that are just being misled. It's like, it's like, um, it's like they have that mentality that, that, that Judah had mm -hmm. before they got carried away into captivity. Mm -hmm. What was it? Um, oh, who was it? Was it Jeremiah? The people wanted him to say something mm -hmm. that was going to favor what they wanted. Micaiah? Saying, tell it, who, who was it? They were saying, tell me what we should do. What should we do? What should we do? And he says, this is what you should do. And they're like, no, we're not going to do that. I know Micaiah is the one they're like, don't ask him because he always prophesies bad about us. Uh, I'll have to look it up later. Yeah, we'll look it up. Um, but they're like, nah, we're going to do what we want to do. Yeah. And anyway, so they they, yeah. they want to act like they want to know what God wants them to do. Yeah. And they'll do it if it matches up with, with what, what they, they want to do. do. Yeah. But if it's different than that, they're just going to say, no, 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 we're not going to listen to you. Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And so many people do that today. Yeah. That's what they do. You can sit down, you can discuss Bible with somebody, you can show it. It it can be a very plain and easy to understand passage, mm -hmm. not figurative, mm -hmm. not complex, mm -hmm. not as some things that Paul wrote, like Peter says. Second Peter 3, 16. Right. Yeah. Not like that where they're hard to understand. It mm -hmm. can be simple as day. And they'll say, well, I see that. Let me go and talk to my pastor real quick. Man, see what he has to say about that. It's like baptism. I, if you're watching this podcast, I'm going to harp on this a lot because it's the main thing people don't teach right in a majority of churches that call themselves Christian. It's baptism. Literally, I've asked people, if Jesus wanted to tell you you needed to be baptized to be saved, how else could he have said it than how he did? Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And then they're like, well, the second part says, if you don't believe, you'll be condemned. Like, well, you want me to tell you how to go to hell or do you want me to tell you how to be saved? If you want yeah. to go to hell and be lost, just don't believe. That's fine. And you don't need anything else after that. But Jesus said, believes <laughs> and is baptized will be saved. Like, like first Peter 3, 21, baptism now saves you. Like, oh, you think water saves you? No, it's because it connects you with the blood of Christ. Like, but God is so clear, man. And so many people are like, ah, oh, no, 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 you don't need to do that. That's not what it, that's not what it means. Just like the devil did in Genesis three. Yeah. Well, we got nine seconds left, so you guys can talk next episode. Um, thank you guys for joining us on the Authentic Christian Podcast. Aaron, Scott Tucker, and we'll see you back on the next episode. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today.